Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. We are continuing our Procreate tutorial series for architects. Today, we will talk about how to create an isometric drawing from 2D plan drawings of a building. We will build the drawing floor by floor and create this exploded diagram of our design. First, let's bring the plan drawings one by one. Top the wrench icon, choose add and tap insert a file button. Bring all the floors one by one. If you have a roof plan, do not forget to import that one as well in order to have a cohesive diagram. You will notice Procreate automatically aligns all the imported drawings to the center of the canvas. If your drawings are same scale and aligned, this feature will actually be useful as they will be located perfectly on top of each other. Go to Actions menu, choose Canvas and toggle on the Drawing Guide. Tap Edit Drawing Guide and choose Isometric Guide from the Settings window at the bottom of the screen. Here you can play with the size and color of the grid. Tap Done when you are happy with the adjustments. In order to start drawing, we will distort the original plan drawings to align them into isometric grid. When your drawing layer is selected, tap the cursor icon and bring the transform menu. Choose distort. This will allow us to distort image freely. If you hold the image from the corner points, this will cause a disproportionate change. Instead, hold the center of the edge to distort. This is the kind of distortion we are looking for here. However, you can notice stretching unevenly will cause disproportionate changes again. To prevent that we can have scale lines on both X and Y axis so we can easily control the stretching equally. I already have one scale line here on my plan, so I will select and duplicate that for each plan. If you don't have scale lines on your drawing, you do not have to worry you can activate that to the grid and draw a scale line that is proportional with your drawing. Here, I aligned my second scale line on Y axis, and now I am going to duplicate this layer for each one of the plans. Merging and renaming them accordingly. I group these layers and duplicate them. It is always a good idea to keep the original drawings as a backup. When you select a group, you can easily move and transform the layers in the group together. So I activate the isometric grid and start aligning the plans. I control the stretching along the axes with the help of the scale lines. I try to keep both scale lines at the same grid distances. Once I am happy with the alignment and the proportions, I choose the uniform distortion and scale the drawings for a better fit for my canvas. I choose the ground floor plan, drop the opacity and separate it from the group. This will be my reference for the ground floor level. I create a new layer and activate the drawing assist on it. I get a sense of scale for the z-axis with the help of the scale line here. I draw a two and a half meter long line approximately and use this as a reference for the height of the walls that I am going to draw on this floor. Now I can start drawing the walls along the plan and extruding them same height as this reference. You can see here I finished drawing back part of the building. I won't draw the front part so we can see inside and get a sense of the space. I create a new layer and continue drawing the inner walls. There aren't many interior walls as this design has an open plan. But if your design has more interior walls, you can use the same method and draw the walls that will not interfere with the scene that you want to create. As I am drawing these outlines of the walls, it is becoming more difficult to see the front-back relation between the layers. Therefore. I will start color filling inside them. We created this monochromatic color palette. I am going to be using these different shades for the surfaces. Now, I continue drawing the floor. I trace the plan and give thickness to the slab. I color fill and use a darker shade for the floor surface. Each one of these elements are on different layers, so I can control the visibility easily. I turn of the floor layer to continue drawing the columns. The method is same. I trace over the plan. Since the columns are circular, I copy the circle that I traced over to create the top of the column as well. Then draw the vertical lines. I colorful and copy the column to create the other ones easily. I follow the plan to locate them in exact places.
I continue tracing over the other elements from the plan and extruding them along the sit axis to give them thickness. I create the terrace and backyard this way. They are on lower level than the ground floor slab, so I move them on zit axis to show the height difference. Because of this height difference the columns that I copied is on a higher level and do not touch the ground on backyard as you can see here. I copy the column layer and move it along the Z axis again to elongate them. The bottom part of the columns will be lower than the terrace so I carry that column layer behind the terrace layer and I erase the outline from the previous shorter columns. I add colorful and pattern to the pool area on the backyard. I use a wavy pattern from our sketchy pattern brush set and distort it along the grid. Then I use a clip mask to mask it within the limits of the color fill. This way I finish illustrating the main elements on the ground level. I group all the layers of the ground floor and rename it. Now I bring the first floor plan to the front. You can see it is a mezzanine floor and only covering the half of the area. The location of the walls and columns are same as the ground level. So I copy these elements from the ground level. I trace over the limits of this floor and erase the extra parts. Since it is a mezzanine floor, I don't want to show the full exterior walls and all of the columns continuing to the roof. This is to emphasize the intermediate characteristic of this floor. I only keep the columns on this slab and mask the rest of the columns. I group all the layers on this floor and rename it. I carry this group on top of the ground floor through its axis carefully. And finally, I will draw the rooftop. This floor consists of a slab that has elliptical voids and roof axis hatch enabling access to this area. I will start tracing the outer edges of the slab, then continue with creating the parapet's limits and the thickness of them all. I color fill the enclosed areas and continue drawing the ellipses and give thickness to them as well. Finally, I add the landscape lines and railings around the voids. I carry the roof to the top of the building, and with this the main structure of the building has been drawn. Now we can start to illustrate the inner space. I start with the ground floor and make the ground floor plan visible. I hit the doors with the reference I take from the plan. I adjust some of the color fills to make them more visible and I create a new layer for the furnishing I will place on this floor. I will use the isometric brush set we prepared for this drawing, but you can also draw your own version of the furniture taking reference from your planned drawing. If you want to use the same brush set we use here, check the link in the description box below. I pay attention to create new layers for each one of them, so I can move them freely, but I will merge the ones that are not juxtaposed with each other later. This will be helpful when I want to colorful inside this furniture. I continue with the terrace and garden area to complete the exterior space as well. Once I am satisfied with the layout, I merge the furniture that are not interfering with each other. Then, I use quick selection tool to choose the outer space and invert that selection to fill inside all this furniture layer by layer. Then I add the other details like the railing around the terrace and the stairs to the mezzanine.
I color fill the staircase with the automatic selection tool. I merge the layers of the staircase and create a layer mask to erase the parts that will not be visible because of the column in the middle. Finally, I am finished with the ground floor, and I will continue with the first floor. I copy the door from the first floor and continue with the placing furniture. I create the bedroom space on the mezzanine floor and color fill inside the furnishing using the same method I used while drawing the ground floor. With that, I am finished with this floor as well. I can separate the floors to make them more visible and create the exploded diagram look. Now I have more or less the finished drawing, I can play with style. I add dotted lines to connect the floors and I add a background color. I add trees around the building and human figures inside to give a sense of space. Now it is time to use blending tools and filters. Let's export the drawing as PNG and import it again. I choose the inserted image layer and go to adjustments menu to apply gradient map. I prefer this blues gradient as it enhances the outlines. I apply linear burn from the blending options but you can try the other blending options as well. Finally, I add texture as a finishing touch. I use the brushes from texture brush set which you can find the link for in the description box below. I add different textures and play with their colors, opacity and blending options. And this is how we created this isometric diagram. Do not forget to follow us for more Procreate tutorials like this. See you on the next tutorial.